Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Jess Hilarious, Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. Lawrence filling in for Jess. And rest in peace to Rich Homie Quan. I'm sure we'll get into it in the rumors in a little bit. But let's get in some front page news. Good morning, Morgan. Good morning. It could be a good morning, but that definitely makes me feel some type of way. That news for sure. Um, RIP to Rich Homie Quan. Huge fan. Um, but uh, election day is less than two months away, so make sure you're registered to vote. Check out vote.gov for more information on how to register and where your polling locations are in your area. Vice President Kamala Harris, now she used her first visit to New Hampshire in years to make a promise to small business owners. During a campaign stop in Northampton yesterday, Harris said if elected president, she'll work to create an economy where everyone can succeed. Harris also said small business owners are some of the country's hardest workers, and she pledged to help more small businesses so they can be profitable for generations to come. Let's hear more from VP Harris in New Hampshire. And I've met so many entrepreneurs across the country who take the incredible leap of faith that is required to start a small business. Folks who put their life savings on the line and work through the weekends and holidays, they aren't just building a business, they're pursuing a dream. Yeah, so Vice President Harris said, uh, well, she will head to Pittsburgh to get ready for next week's debate. Her running mate, Tim Walls, will also be in Pennsylvania, where he, where he will speak in Erie tonight. So we'll hear from him. Uh, meanwhile, uh, former President Donald Trump, he says his economic plan would bring down inflation. During a speech at the Economic Club in New York on Thursday, that was yesterday, the Republican presidential candidate says domestic drilling will be the key. He also went after Vice President Kamala Harris's proposal to ban price gas gouging on groceries. Trump called the Democratic nominee a Marxist and comrade Kamala Harris. Let's hear more from former President Trump. That means we're going down and getting gasoline below $2 a gallon, bring down the price of everything from electricity rates to groceries, airfares and housing costs. We have more liquid gold under our feet than any other country, including Russia and Saudi Arabia. Kamala launched a war on American energy and orchestrated a nation wrecking border invasion. During his speech, he also endorsed the idea of forming a commission to audit government spending that could include a role for billionaire Elon Musk. Let's hear those comments from Trump. I will create a government efficiency commission task with conducting a complete financial and performance audit of the entire federal government. Elon, because he's not very busy, has agreed to head that task force. Yeah, so the proposed commission would be <laughs> Elon not very for... busy. <laughs> yeah, so the proposed commission would be responsible for auditing federal government spending. It will also recommend new reforms. I'm not sure that Elon's the man for that job, but you know, hey, to each his own. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting, man. This whole election is interesting because it's going to be close come November. Uh, I, I like how, you know, the vice president is hitting the ground and speaking to people in these battleground states. But I do feel like I think she does need to do more uh, outreach in the press because I believe it's a lot of excitement within the party and in like mm -hmm. that blue bubble. But she got to excite the folks outside of that bubble because I don't want this to be one of those elections where she wins the popular vote but loses the electoral college vote. Mm. Right, makes sense. Yeah, for well, sure. She's starting to do interviews, right? I seen she's doing something know. with uh, Ricky Smiley. I thought she was doing something else I seen next week. So maybe she is getting out there. I'm going to come to the Breakfast Club. Hey, girl. All right. Well, that is front page news. Now, get it off your chest. 800-585-1051. If you need to vent, phone lines are wide open again. 800-585-1051. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Wake that ass up. Early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Jess Hilarious, Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. Lauren LaRosa filling in for Jess, and let's get in some front page news. What's up, Morgan? Yeah, so Republican vice presidential candidate J.D. Vance, he spoke in Arizona yesterday about how families can alleviate some of the pressures of child care costs. Let's hear more from Vance on child care. So one of the ways that you might be able to relieve a little bit of pressure on people who are, who are paying so much for daycare is make it so that, that, you know, maybe like grandma or grandpa wants to help out a little bit more. Or maybe there's an aunt or uncle that wants to help out a little bit more. If that happens, you relieve some of the pressure on all the resources that we're spending in daycare. Now, you talk about just daycare. Let's say you don't have somebody who, who can provide that extra set of hands. What we've got to do 
is actually empower people to get trained in the skills that they need for the 21st century. We've got a lot of people who love kids, who would love to take care of kids, but they can't either because they don't have access to the education that they need. Who the hell is he talking to, okay? We've been doing that for, I've been alive since 1978, okay? That was, all, that was always the way things were done. You know why? Because we couldn't afford childcare. So, so if grandma was home or an aunt was home, please watch these kids, mm -hmm. all right? Now it's, now it's grandma gotta have a life too. Auntie need a life too. That's right. Um, but Vance, um, he did also address the uh, school shooting. He called for tighter school security after the recent shooting in Georgia and said school shootings are a, quote, fact of life. Uh, Vance went on to say uh, schools must be prepared for shooting scenarios, telling the crowd it is the reality that we live in. Let's hear more from Vance on the school shooting. I don't like this. I don't like to admit this. I don't like that this is a fact of life. But if you're if you are a psycho and you want to make headlines you realize that our schools are soft targets. And we have got to bolster security at our schools. You've got some states with very strict gun laws, and you've got some states that don't have strict gun laws at all. And the states with strict gun laws, they have a lot of school shootings. And the states without strict gun laws, some of them have school shootings too. What? I, I, yeah. I, I will, some of that I agree with, you know what I'm saying? Because even if there is some type of common sense gun reform passed, which it won't be because too many of these senators are, uh, are in the, you know, pockets of the NRA, um, even if there is some type of common sense gun reform, even if there is, you know, more mental health resources provided to people, I still think that there should be tighter security at these schools. Like, I, 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 I truly believe that. But like, the only thing, the other thing that, only other thing they can really do is have metal detectors at every school, right? I think they should. Because they had two police officers there, so it wasn't like there weren't no police officers there. So the only thing that they could possibly do was have metal detectors. I think but they should have metal detectors. I think and mental health professionals, security. too, to Charlemagne's point. You know, mental health professionals could probably help if you know that somebody is going through something. And meanwhile, we knew we we knew that this, uh, this kid was actually being investigated. Uh, so if that's a thing, then maybe you know the school is looped in on those correspondence as well um speaking of which um the father of the suspect in wednesday school shooting he is being arrested and charged with murder let's hear from gbi that's the georgia bureau of investigation announcing those charges uh, in coordination with the district attorney with district attorney brad smith the gbi has arrested colin gray age 54 in connection to the shooting here at Appalachia High School. These charges stem from Mr. Gray knowingly allowing his son, Colt, to possess a weapon. Hey, yeah, so Colin Gray is the dad. He says he brought his his son uh, a gun, uh, a gift for, the. he bought the gun as a gift for his son. Um, and he told investigators that he bought an AR-15 style rifle uh, as a holiday present for his son back in December of 2023. Now, that is the same year uh, the boy was investigated for making school threats online. That was May of 2023 when he made those uh, threats. Now, Colin Gray has been charged with four counts of involuntary manslaughter, two counts of second degree murder and eight counts of cruelty to children. His son, 14 year old Colt Gray who uh, carried out the shooting, was charged with four counts of felony murder and is set to appear in court this morning where he will be charged as an adult. Um, he's accused of killing two students and two teachers at Appalachia High School in Winder, uh, which is located about 50 miles northeast of Atlanta, just west of Athens, Georgia. Nine others were also injured in that incident. Very, very sad. I don't, um, but like you sad. said yesterday, the, the parents are going to be held responsible. But this is the problem, right? There is no minimum age to possess a rifle in Georgia. There is no minimum age. That's insane. So is it against the law? Yeah, I want to see the parents be arrested because I feel like the parents should have made sure it was locked, locked up. But if there is no minimum age to possess a rifle in Georgia, what do you what, what, like? What, what's the real charge? Because the kid could have a rifle in, in that state, right? Uh, maybe neglect. I don't know. But, you know, uh, I, I'll say this, man. It's no one way that this problem will be corrected. There's no one way the problem of mass shootings in America will be corrected. It's going to take a lot of things over a long time. And it's all of these things we're talking about. Yes, you're going to need more mental health resources. Yes, you need common sense gun reform. Yes, in some cases, you got to charge the parents. Mm -hmm. You know, when these kids get access I to agree. these weapons, you know, when they take them out the house, whatever it is. And you're going to need more security in schools. It's going to take all of that to stop this epidemic that is mass shootings in school. And it's going to take all of those efforts over a long period of time. But when does yeah. this stuff like actually kick in? Because this is the conversation every single time, and then well, it's, it's it got to. Well, the, the thing is, it it's got to start. We haven't had all these things we're talking about haven't happened. Mm. There isn't common sense gun reform. 
right? There isn't more mental health resources being provided, right? So all of these things, there is no security in schools like it should be. So all of these, it, we got to get started. And, and then not only that, right? If, if the FBI was talking to this kid, right? And this kid was attending this school that my kid is attending, I think the parents should know. Mm-hmm. I, think I think it should, it should give the parents the, the option to, to know and understand so they know what's going on. And if this kid is talking so crazy that the FBI is talking to him, I should have the right to be like, you know what? I don't want my kid to go to that school. Did they, think- did they not know? The parent, I, didn't, I, I, don't, I, I have no Ooh. idea if the pa- parents knew or not, but the fact that that was happening, and then I don't even think he should have been allowed back into a, a regular school that fast. Like a year later after the FBI is in your home asking you about threats online, like I don't... I, don't think I, the yeah, I read knew. an article that said he was said he was crying for help. So somebody knew something. Yeah. I just think all that happened too fast. It was like, oh, okay. Made a little mistake on a video game. Send him back to school. Like, no. Nah. Nah, B. Yeah. yeah. Definitely need to go to an alternative school for for a little bit of time, you know, rehab, rehabilitate them or us or something to that effect. I'm not sure. But yeah, you know, like to your point, I'll bring in all the resources. That's so right. uh, but again, uh, NFL kicked off yesterday. And of course, you know, the Ravens uh, lost to the Chiefs 27 to 20 at Arrowhead Stadium. How do you Thursday. feel about that, Morgan? I'm a little salty, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, they can't keep beating us. So I'm going to just put it to that. You know, <laughs> That's Mahomes a good way to think about it. 20 of 28 passes for 291 yards, one touchdown and one interception. Um, and of course, uh, yeah, they yeah they they took on it. But uh, NFL continues week one. Um, the Eagles are in uh, Brazil tonight to play the. Uh, oh, sheesh, I couldn't get it out. Jeez. The Packers. Thank you, thank you. Sorry, my words are getting jumbled. But yes, the Eagles are in Brazil tonight to play the Packers, and of course, Sunday night football or Sunday football continues. Um, I don't know. That's good. Yeah, um, that's your front page news. So follow me on social at Morgan Media, and for more news coverage, follow at Black Information Network. Download the free iHeartRadio app and visit binnews.com. Happy Friday, y'all. You so flustered when your Ravens lost. You are so flustered, mm. man. I'm <laughs> telling you, I'm gonna need this weekend to recover. We- we'll be back at it. All right. Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club.